You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Miko's Path. So, the last place we left off was we were just starting again, and we had an alternate opening, and that was pretty cool. It was a lot more philosophical, more introspective. So, let's jump right back in, shall we? Alrighty. Let's do it. <clears throat> we're here. I got so lost in thoughts, I didn't notice Miko had stopped. Oh, right. Do you want to come in for a moment? Sure. Yeah. I can't stay for long, though. I haven't unpacked anything yet. Just dropped off my stuff. Miko walks in through the door, and I follow him, lifting the bag to avoid bumping it at the doorstep. His room looks similar to mine, which is no surprise. What surprises me, though, is that he has two single beds instead of one like in mine. You asked for a double room? Hmm? Oh, no. Coach Devin said that I, said that almost all the rooms here are double. So even if we ask for a single one, we still might get one with two beds. I still have it all to myself, though. I see. I see. That's neat. Where should I put the bag? No, oh, just anywhere. I'll unpack it right away. What's inside? Uh, what's inside, by the way? It wouldn't be heavier if you stuffed it with rocks, I think. Yeah, <laughs> just some instruments and effects. The stuff I thought I might need. I walk up to the window and draw open the curtains, looking outside. It's not snowing as much anymore at the moment, but it will probably pick up again soon. A view, even from the ground floor, is still spectacular. The guest house is surrounded by a forest, and in the distance some hills hide beneath layers of fog. Soft white fluff is covering everything in sight. I look around, admiring the serene landscape, and then, at the edge of the forest, perched on a tree, I see it. Look! An eagle! I think it's the same one I saw earlier. I quickly unzip my bag and take out my camera. I turn it on, nervously waiting for it to start responding. The screen is still black. Ugh! Stupid me! Scat, point the camera in the direction where I spotted it and look through the viewfinder. It's gone again. I feel a wave of cold sweat run over my back. I've lost it. It was... I was too slow. You didn't catch it? I turn around. Miko, leaning in, is looking at me with concern. Seeing him up close for the first time in three years, I realized that I'd forgotten how blue his eyes are. Mm-hmm. Looks like it. <sighs> it wasn't quick enough. I feel the urge to kick myself in the shin for this. I've seen it twice today, and both times I was too slow. Suddenly, I find myself in a tight embrace of my childhood friend. Slowly, my anger fades away, and I hug him back. His smell is very familiar and comforting. Like most, like most Finns, he wasn't always such a physical person. It was my influence, mostly, that changed it. I've always liked keeping my friends close, and I've always found hugging very comforting. So, little by little, I turned him from a typical solitary Finn into the cuddly wolf he is now. Now, I am the first one to push back, though, breaking the hug. I really missed him. Although, how on earth did you want to get a good shot through the window? Oh, I put a polarizing filter on this lens, just in case we, sh we would witness something interesting during the ride. See? I unscrewed the filter from the lens and showed it to Miko. He takes the ring and rotates it in his fingers, observing how, how it brightens and darkens the image depending on the angle. At a good angle, it cleans out all the reflections nicely. I would still need a lot of luck to get a good shot, though. I glance outside again, just in any case, but behind the window, only snowflakes dance in the Arctic air. Meanwhile, Miko opens his bags and starts unpacking his stuff. Oh, you need any help with that? Sweet of you to ask, but there's not much but there's not that much of it. I seriously doubt that, but I'm not going to press. Maybe he's afraid to let me handle his gear. I've always had a bit of I've always been a bit of a clumsy type. I better leave him now and go unpack myself too. Sorry that this visit was so brief, but I should be going already. Aww. I'm gonna save it right there. Visit me sometime later, too, okay? Sure thing. We'll have plenty of time. See you later. See you, Carvin. It's really nice to see him again and spend some time together. It takes me back to my adolescence and all those memories I have of it. Some rose tinted and drenched in warm sunlight. Some bittersweet, but not any less precious. Although, 
it also feels a bit awkward. There are some unresolved things here hanging between us, and neither of us have tried to talk about them since we were reunited. At the end of the middle school, I developed, such, I developed a crush on him and started to avoid him for that reason. I wasn't ready to admit, even to myself, that I might not be straight. Thankfully, it's all in the past now. I got over my crush on him after a few hard months that felt like a fever dream. Yeah, I know what that feels like. After middle school, we each went to different high schools, and our paths separated. Mika tried to keep in touch, but I couldn't bring myself to talk with him. We separated without a goodbye. This year, however, we found ourselves studying at the same university, although in different departments. We just resumed our friendship as if nothing had happened, and we both know there are things we still have to talk about sooner or later. Maybe that will give me some sense of closure. Closing a chapter so that we can start a new one. But for now, I prefer to just enjoy his company while I can. I really missed him, and seeing him smile makes me happy too. And he seems truly happy for the camp. I haven't seen him this cheerful in, well, maybe ever. I wonder what view I have from here. I should be able to see more of the landscape than from the ground floor, at least. I pick up my bag and take out my instant camera. It's only for special occasions, but this certainly is one. Walking up to the window, I take a look outside. From here, I can see a few lakes and clearings, spots of shimmering water and white splotches between the trees. Soft white fluff is covering everything in sight, and it's starting to snow again. A blanket of gray clouds hangs heavy above the land, casting shadows over everything. I love this kind of weather. There's something mysterious about dark days like today, as if the earth was covering itself in snow and shade to hide its secrets from our eyes. Yeah, it's a pretty dark day out here today as well. Very overcast, very damp and cold. Great day to stay in and play some visual novels. The snowflakes dance in the air before my eyes, blown around by the wind, blind and silent. I wish I could see some more birds, but that's unlikely, especially with the snow getting heavier again. I could spend the whole day just looking at the landscape, though. I open the window and the cold wind pushes in, ruffling my fur. No, little kitty, you cannot come up here, you sweet little boy. It smells of pines and earth. I turn on the camera and lean on the windowsill, creating a bipod with my arms. A quick look into the viewfinder to find the right frame. Oh, pardon me. I swiftly close the window. The air in the room is much chillier now, and my fur is all bristled from the unfriendly wind, but I have my photo. I pull it out from the camera quickly, and quickly stow it in the camera bag to shield it from the light. If I'd just left it in the open, it would have been ruined. Instant photos require a lot of care. Hmm. I still have a few minutes left to unpack. I take my shoes off. Ugh, I should have done it before walking straight across the room and put on the lighter ones I took from my bag. The next few minutes are spent on emptying my bag and putting everything in its newly assigned places. I'm done just about before I'm done just before the 30 minutes have passed. I take the photo out of the bag, careful not to touch the surface, otherwise I could leave paw prints, pad prints on it and never be able to get rid of them. The photo turned out pretty much as I wanted. The ominous sky fills most of the frame, outstretched above the fuzzy dark green splotch of the forest beneath, all behind the swirl of snowflakes. Let me save right here. Little save breaks. You never know what you'll end up with when taking an instant photo, or using a film in general, and that's precisely what I love about it. When I know exactly what, what photo I want to take, I use my DSLR. But when, I want to capture a, but when I want to capture not a scene, but a mood or a feeling, something fleeting and delicate, I take out the instant camera. Often, what I end up loving the most in those photos are the imperfections. Like the overexposed white spaces where something should be but isn't. There's just a blank, blank space left for our imagination. Those photos seem alive in a way, and that's what I'm aiming for here. I want a reminder of this place and this moment for the future me. I can sense that there's something significant about this camp, as if something important is bound to happen here. My feline senses tell me that. I grab my camera bag, put the exposed photo in the side pocket, and leave the room. The corridors are still empty. Everyone must have already got there. A quick glance at my swatch tells me it's 1331, so I'm barely late by a minute. But lunch is the last thing I'd want to be late to. I open the door and enter the cafeteria. Looks like I'm not the last one. Most of the seats are occupied, but some of the students I saw on the bus are not here yet. The cafeteria is spacious and pretty modern, much better than what I would expect from a rural guesthouse. 
Some plants are lined up against the southern wall with windows and lamp with windows and lamps hanging from the ceiling light above. Let me try that one more time. Some plants are lined up against the southern wall with windows, and lamps hanging from the ceiling light up the room. There we go. I see two tables with people I know. Miko is sitting at, at one at the end of the room with that bear I met earlier and a raccoon I don't know. Kudzu! <laughs> and Lake is sitting at the table just next to that one, together with Coach and Rune. Lake notices me first and waves to me enthusiastically. But I am going to ignore you because I am evil and I am going with the wolf on this one. I hesitate for a moment, but I wave back to Lake and walk to the table where Miko was sitting and take the spot next to him. He notices me and greets me with a warm smile. I don't know the others, but at least I'm with my friend. And Lake, I'll catch up with him after lunch. You're late for lunch. That's unlike you. I wanted to finish unpacking before coming here, and I took, and I took too much stuff as always. Hey, I'm just teasing you. I probably took twice as much stuff as you did anyway. The food isn't here yet, but it should be in a minute. Hey, so you're Carbon, yes? Miko mentioned you just a short while before. From the other side of the table, the bear I met earlier leans in and introduces himself in a considerably low voice. Oh, a low voice. Gotcha. I didn't introduce myself earlier. I'm Bjorn. I study neuroscience. There we go. I think this is going to be Bjorn's canon voice for my Let's Plays. Yep. That's me. Good to meet you again. And likewise. Sorry for leaving you like that, but I don't like leaving my bags unattended. Even though he still feels slightly intimidating, he also seems pretty friendly. At least judging by his introduction. Also, if my bag was nothing to him, what the hell did this guy pack to have to make multiple courses? You two know each other yet? He gestures to the raccoon sitting next to him, and I shake my head. This is Travis. And I'm studying neuroscience, too. I've started this year. Travis is much smaller than the bear sitting next to him, even more energetic. He has that lively, eager spark in his eyes that young animals have. Raccoons rarely live in this part of the world, and he speaks with basically no accent. I wonder if he's from around here. You're a raccoon, yes? Are you from here, or did you move here for your studies? No, I'm not a raccoon. I'm a tanuki. See this tail? No stripes. He smirks, lifting his long, fluffy tail. No stripes, indeed. I feel stupid now. I'm gonna save right here. Oh, this must be the Tanuki uh, Miko mentioned earlier. Don't worry, that's a common mistake. I don't mind. And I was born in the U.S., but my mom is from Japan, so I'm half American, half Japanese. Nice to meet you, Carvin. Nice to meet you, too. I smile meekly, still feeling stupid over that mistake. He might say whatever he wants, but it is always rude to make to mistake when someone's species. I want to apologize to him, but I'm interrupted by the waiter putting plates with our meals on our table. Ooh. I could swear his eyes gleamed with pure lust. Before us are two sizable dishes, one with what looks like a root vegetable stew, and the other with some sort of salad. There's also a basket with bread and a plate with sunshine buns, each wrapped in paper for convenience. Oh, I love those. Soft and fluffy, smelling of cardamom and cinnamon, they became my go-to dessert after moving to Norway. Alright, let's see if I can pronounce this again. Ricosta lot in turnip stew. Nice. Light and tasty. Good choice for lunch. Looking at him, I would never guess he likes his, light, his lunch light. He's built like a tank, that's for sure. I bite my tongue and refrain from inquiring about this, though. I've just met him, and what a way to ruin a friendship that would be. Looks yummy. What do you usually eat for lunch? Hmm, it's usually a few sandwiches, then a sweet roll or two. Looks like he has a sweet tooth. This I can believe. In Norway, we usually have plain sandwiches for lunch. One topping each, nothing more. It's sort of a tradition to have a lunch as uninteresting as possible. He gestures with a spoon in his paw, looking pretty funny. Very dull tradition, if you ask me. It started with some government-funded program providing lunches for children, back when Norway was a poor country. But we're not anymore, and I'd rather have something that brightens up my day. He gives me a wide grin, and I smile back. His good mood is contagious, and despite not knowing each other well, the atmosphere at our table is lively and relaxed. 
Come on, never understand why you know regions are doing this to yourselves. Like, there are so many good things you can eat, and yet you eat your dark bread with some kind of tasteless paste every day. Travis is already putting some thick stew on his plate, along with a few slices of rye bread. Be glad that we get a lunch like this today. He grabs his glass, full of what looks like orange juice, and lifts it up theatrically. To our university! Finishing the glass in one big beastly gulp, he takes the salad spoon from Travis and starts to put salad on his plate. Okay. Let's see if I can do this again, because I mispronounced it last time. It's a... <clears throat> it's a dakimasu! I probably butchered that. Travis proclaimed loudly. It would have a greater effect if he had a pair of chopsticks in his paws instead of a spoon. I glance at Miko. He is looking somewhere sideways, not really paying attention to us. If I didn't know him any better, I would have thought that he doesn't want to talk with us. But I do, and I know that he is always silent with new groups of people. He is friendly, of course, but he needs some time to get used to everyone. And the louder and more enthusiastic the company is, the more he retreats into himself. Let's get him in there. Oh, Miko, tell them what you always have for lunch. Miko jumps a little in his seat and turns towards us. I hope I didn't give him a heart attack. Uh, usually I make myself a, a hugh shake. I don't need anything fancy. hugh -hole. What's that? It's a shake powder mix that has all the nutrients your body needs. It's as convenient and fast as it gets. Preparation takes literally a minute. It's really an interesting concept. On one pot, it's nutritious and healthy. On the other, it's as processed as food can get. He let me try it once, and while I unexpectedly didn't hate it, I would never recognize it as a proper substitute for a meal. Bjorn Curly doesn't seem convinced either, and Miko is getting flustered. This is not good. Maybe that wasn't the best topic to bring up. Well, it takes some time to get used to, but it's not bad. I grab the salad spoon and start putting food on his plate for him. This is this enough, or you want some more? That's enough. I'm not that hungry yet. And thank you. Looking back at the rest, I can see that Bjorn observes us with amusement. Am I doing something weird? This reminds me of the time when Miko would almost spend more time at my place than, than at his home. We would eat my mother's food together almost every weekday. I remember that Miko tried to tell his father that he eats his lunches in a lunch, nearby, in a lunch bar nearby, and that he needed money for him, from, from him to do that. That failed, of course, because his father didn't really have any money. I should stop daydreaming now, though. Instead, I put some stew and salad on my plate. Oh, that smells good. Until now, I didn't realize how hungry I was. I grab a slice of rye bread and start eating the stew. It has a rich, earthy taste, and the turnips add a crunchy texture. It's flavored masterfully, not bland and not too strong, with a hint of thyme and smoked paprika. Ooh, that's good. I needed that. It is indeed. Bjorn was a quiet, was a bit quiet at first, but with a good meal in front of him, he seems to be, a, he seems to open up a bit more. He seemed to have a bit of an un unapproachable aura to him, but maybe that was just the first impression. Suddenly, I hear the door to the cafeteria opening. I turn in their direction, and I see a figure clad in dark clothes entering the room. And they're walking in our direction. Yes! Class's new sprite! It looks so much better! I like this one much more. He sits down next to Bjorn and starts to put food on his plate, all without saying anything. I look at Bjorn questioningly, but he only shrugs, apparently clueless himself. I take a better look at the newcomer. He's definitely a cat, not very tall, average build. Dyed hair and... Is that a pentagram hanging from his neck? Hello, I'm Travis and I'm a freshman studying neuroscience. How about you? I exhale with relief. Travis's kindness is stronger than the stranger's awkwardness. Good. I was afraid that we'd spend the rest of lunch in silence. I'm Klaus. Looks like that's all we will get from him. So, anyway, Carvin, you're from Finland like Miko, yeah? What made you move here? Yes, I moved here as I needed some change of scenery. I wanted to study cognitive science, and none of the universities back home had a good syllabus alongside the facilities for that. I've never heard of that subject. What is it about? It's a broad field encompassing neurobiology, psychology, and anthropology. Its main focus being the process of cognition, and what's more fascinating than that? It's how we perceive the world around us, and how we perceive ourselves. Potentially, it's the key to understanding the animal mind. Wow, I think I sounded smart. And maybe even convincing, if I had some luck. Hmm, 
That's interesting. It overlaps a bit with what I'm studying. We'll see if you will find a job after that, though. Look who's talking. You're studying marine biology, Miko. Hey, it's also an interesting field. Marine mammals are similar to us in many ways, but didn't evolve with opposable thumbs and do not walk on two paws. Mm, excuse me. We cannot yet communicate with them, and I want to work on bridging this gap between us. There's a lot of scientific work to be done here. We're only now a fish. We're only now finally warming up to the idea that the other creatures around us are also sapient. And what made you study neuroscience, Bjorn? Hmm. Well. Oh. Being a neuroscientist is a respectable job, isn't it? All right, there we go. That is a new episode of Don Chorus. He goes path. <laughs> Didn't mean to sound so ominous. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.